let me start with the uh, with a review of uh, specifically the uh, the visualizations that we did last time. Uh, well, the whole week, pretty much. Uh, but just uh, um, I, I did them all from scratch. If you remember, starting every time from uh, from a uh, um, uh, very uh, blank uh, blank spreadsheet. But uh, afterwards, you could do tweak things a little bit and make make things look better and add all kinds of labels and so on. So that's what I did over here. Um, so this is in particular uh, visual, visualization of the uh, of a primitive curve. Okay, so two functions. You can see them on the left. They're sampled. Uh, similar but not exactly the same as what you would need in class and, uh, um, and then uh, if you, so two functions have nothing to do with each other but what I, seemingly, but I did try to indicate, well first of all the inputs are, I, I tried to color code things so the inputs are blue and the outputs are red, uh, uh, pink and, and green so that they are different but as you can see not only the colors but only the TXs are color coded blue so that you know it is the same Okay, so once they are stu being studied, uh, if necessary, we move on to try to pull them together. And uh, that's, that's what you see on the right. Uh, so those two four, four uh, axes, are, uh, four, four uh, columns are put together. Uh, at this point, you realize that the, these two are the same. But other than that, you, you can already plot it by plotting on the x and y's in that correspondence. So this, this is one point, that's another point like this, and T disappears, and those points are plotted over there. But in addition to what I did last time, I also uh, labeled, uh, labeled the points with, with time. So because, as you can see, green comes from, it is the x-axis. See over there? The, it, hmm, I guess I messed up. Oh, okay, so that's the point. Uh, this is supposed to be red and this is supposed to be green. So the, uh, the x-axis is red and the y-axis is, is green. Okay. So, um, uh, but there's no t-axis. Okay, that's why to provide that missing information, you label points as much as possible. So x and y are is where, where you're located, and the points, those marks, are where. So it is a totally uh, resembles motion. Uh, because uh, that, that's the metaphor for where the project occurs is always this kind of motion e, uh, just 99 of 100 t stands for time and that's the way to think about it on the other hand the uh, the you it's motion in space even though the space does not have to be the physical space it could be uh, a space of prices that we had last time okay any kind of abstract two or higher dimensional space okay so that's another thing I did, a uh, more compact way of, of representing this function is on the right of a parametric curve. That's, that's what the parametric curve would look like. It would have a, a column for the input, that's one input, two outputs. Okay, so, so then you can, you can just plot it from here or from there. It's the result is the same. This is just a more explicitly how the functions are merged together. Okay, and then, and then you can just, uh, what I did here is, is to make a different point and that is when the same thing is done in reverse and that's what we just saw is a permit permit curve and on the other hand this is uh, this is what happens when you parametrize the curve so there's a curve nothing else exists yet in the uh, in the order to parametrize meaning that you want to provide uh, two functions uh, uh, that form a parametric parametric curve okay um, so this is a purely geometric um, object. It's, you can think of it as a road. And if you want to measure it up, uh, and all, for, for example, you might, might be interested in a lot of things about it, the lengths. You can be interested in curvatures of a road or, or definitely a length of a road. You might be interested in uh, finding it. You also care about uh, curvatures. So is it you know, too fast, too, too sharp, or something like that? So uh, how do you do it? Uh, and that's that's the standard ways to parameterize it. Find this. So this is what's above is the representation of what's below. Uh, so you just uh, get into your car and uh, try to drive it in a more or less uniform fashion through the uh, through the road, and then you record with your GPS record all the uh, all the locations at the same time um, on your clock. You know your uh, your when when it time, time, and, and, and the uh, location, okay? So, and then, and then it is, uh, if you look at the whole thing, then this is, you have, you have two functions. And then, uh, getting closer to, to calculus, uh, the derivatives, uh, in particular, 
of uh, all these two functions. They are the ones that form a parameter curve, uh, give you the information about uh, calculus-like issues that you encounter uh, when you look at a curve with no parameterization, such as tangent lines, um, as I said, length, which is some kind of integral, um, and, uh, and curvature, which actually depends on the secondary. Okay, so we'll do all of that. But at this point, this is just an illustration too, so, so you know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, so the, the key the key point to remember that parameterizations are non-specific. So you can drive over that uh, road over there in many many different ways. You can uh, at a constant speed, or you can higher speed, lower speed. You can speed up and slow down in the middle of your drive. You can move in backwards. You can drive this way or you can drive that way. It's, it, they're all parameterizations are okay, uh, with uh, some exceptions. So you, you should not, uh, so as far as the just capturing the shape, it doesn't matter. You can even stop in the middle and take a break. However, if you are interested in, in derivatives later on, uh, it could be a problem because, uh, because uh, think about if you use, I stop right here in the middle, my derivatives will be certainly equal to zero, and even though there is the slope, there is no zero here. It is. It is. Really, there is really nothing uh, uh, related to zero derivative at, at that particular point. So, uh, it, as we shall see s soon, uh, the derivatives uh, do derivatives of these functions capture the behavior of the curve and the shape of the curve. But when they are well behaved and you are not well, roughly speaking, you're not you're not allowed to stop. Okay. Because uh, when you stop, then you, you know, uh, so you will be studying the curve, the, uh, the road. Imagine that you're driving, in a, or somebody's driving you in a car with no windows, okay? And all you have is speedometer, roughly speaking. And from that, looking at the speed, you try to figure out the shape of the road, okay? So, so if somebody stops, if the, the driver stops you or you lose that information, you don't know, you cannot imagine the, how fast you, uh, you, for example, you can even imagine that the driver turned around and, and went backwards and now, now you don't know that. Okay, so, so it's not going to work that way. Uh, but generally, and we'll, we'll do it today, we'll do a little bit of, of uh, derivatives um, with permanent curves. But at this time, it's just what, what came from last week. Uh, let me, what else did we do? Um, so, uh, uh, that's the same thing, pretty much. This is the discovery of the... Uh, uh, I, I made, made up, remember that the point, the question was asked, uh, what uh, what could, in that particular example, so about prices, what could be plotting the parameter curve reveal, and I just modified the example that we had, but you can imagine something a bit more dramatic like this. So you're recording the price of sugar and the price of wheat, and uh, they seem to be related to each other, but uh, otherwise they appear to be quite, quite random. Uh, and then but when you plot it, it is possible that the, uh, uh, the relation will present itself. And in this particular case, by, by choice, certainly, to make the point clear, uh, it is a straight one. Okay, so this is just a more extreme example of what, what can, can, can happen uh, between uh, seemingly unrelated data. Okay, so it's it's a pattern pattern recognition, if you like. Okay, so right, this is once again saying the same thing. Uh, okay, functions of two variables. That was the second topic, and uh, so this is a function. This uh, remember these are the uh, the way we did it. Um, uh, we plotted the function of two variables first, and then uh, at first what we did was we we looked at functions of one variable that are present in this table. So these are x's, these are y's, and then if you choose one row and one, uh, uh, you choose the x row at the top, and one of the zeros in the in the table, then it produces a function, so like, like this one, for example, just happens to be a straight line. Uh, and then you can do more of these, for example, that's another one. Okay, just diff different pair of, of rows. So uh, then the x row is the input, the zero, the blue one, is the output, and it gives me one single function. In the meantime, and then you remember we form uh, the, our plane, our surface of the function of two variables from these, okay? So uh, horizontal ones, a bunch of them, like these two, okay? And then you can have a vertical one too. It uh, 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 will create a, like this, the, the other wireframe, so that is, uh, visualized here somewhere. Um, here it is. 
yeah, small, but, but you can see it's just a different way to plot it. As you can see, the, the graph uh, of this function of variables, uh, which we initially plotted with uh, bars, uh, bars uh, staining on each cell. You have a bar staining on top of it. You can uh, visualize this way with the, uh, you can visualize the original way we did it uh, with, with, uh, with a plane, okay? Uh, this is also plain, but it is plotted as a wireframe, so you can actually see that every line here is, in fact, one of those functions we just saw. Okay, so that's a one function, another one, another one, and these are also, depending on which way you pick. So this will, if I take this one, it will be a function of x, right, because this is the x-axis. On the other hand, if I pick this one, it will be a function of y, because that's the y-axis of price. Uh, Wrong. Uh, okay, so this is the x-axis. This refers to this one, and this is price of y is the horizontal axis. Okay, and there you still can do, do bars if you like. Certainly, the Excel is good at uh, plotting plotting bars for visualization. Okay, so uh, these are the two things uh, that we did. Um, uh, a heat map, and then we got to the composition. That that was the last topic. Remember, uh, so so you have the question was what happens? Uh, well, how do we um, uh, if a person uh, uh, visits the uh, that shop, the uh, baker shop, and look at, looks at the price of the function of time? You you will see something like this. And where does it come from? It comes from the composition of those uh, two functions that we have. Uh, I probably need a name here. So I already named the, uh, the function of the variables uh, from the beginning of the function f. And then I need a function, say, p. OK, so f a function of the variables. And p is, this is the notation, p is equal to f g. So f is the function for uh, 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 function of time. It is still a function of time, but it produces two variables and uh, uh, produces two uh, outcomes that, are, that form our, our xy point on the xy plane. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the composition is of these two functions, even though the, uh, they certainly do not fit, fit into, into anything we've seen in calculus 1 because of the, of the uh, uh, two-dimensional nature of that variable in the middle. Otherwise, the beginning is a number, and the ending is a number, but the, the, what you have in the middle is, the, uh, is, is a point uh, in the xy plane. Okay, so uh, these are the compositions. Uh, the literally, I, I don't think I actually carried it out. Uh, the actual substitution, but uh, you can, you can. Uh, well, let me see. You can do a substitution here. Uh, so how do we compute it? Uh, that's how. So we are, we have. Uh, uh, we form the uh, the first three rows is simply my primary curve. Okay, uh, plot it at the bottom. Okay, so that's still my primary curve. I didn't plot the uh, the uh, function of the variables anymore. I, but it is simply hidden here. In as we transition from x from x y to z, we use the formula. This is the formula. As you can see, two x plus y plus uh, plus y that uh, plus one that is z. So here uh, I didn't mark the. Uh, I didn't label the axis, but this is the p axis, uh, and the vertical is the z axis. Okay, so uh, that, that's how it's formed. But it is more interesting actually to see uh, to see how it how where, where it comes from. The computational is, is very straightforward. So t gives you x and y, then you apply our formula to from those two x and y compute my z. That, that's all. Okay, uh, but uh, but technically there is a well, Excel doesn't do it, but let me. Oh, okay. So I don't have it here. Uh, the illustration of, of how the curve that is uh, at the bottom, the primary curve, how it is used to build the uh, the composition. Uh, let, let's try to imagine that what's happening here. Uh, imagine that the the plane underneath is the xy plane. Okay, so imagine that the curve that we just saw is plotted on the xy plane. It is a primary curve, so it's plotted on the xy plane. And then what we do, we take that, that, that curve that plotted on the xy plane, we lift it uh, vertically and so that it appears on, the, uh, on, the, on our surface. Okay, and then the elevation that we have to 
achieve every time will give me the, uh, the value of z. Okay, so the elevation is given by, uh, by, the, uh, by the surface, but the location is given by x1. So we'll, we'll, we'll look into that more and more later, but uh, uh, the, uh, graphically it's, it's hard to explain what's happening than actually look at, uh, at, the, at the numbers. So this is very strong, straightforward uh, computation. Okay, so, uh, so now uh, let's take a look at compositions and we're making a step towards the, uh, the words capitalist. And the words capitalist is uh, the question that we uh, would be asking always is uh, the rate of change. And, uh, and therefore, the answer is always the derivative, except, except now the, the, the functions are more complicated. And then uh, we have to figure out the meaning of the derivative as well as the rate of change uh, of these functions. However, the function, I did not name it, but <coughs> I, maybe I have. Uh, this is a function, let's say, h. The composition itself, it takes t time to z the price of bread. It is a function of one variable. OK, so that is a function from calculus 1. So there, there is not, nothing, nothing new about it, but it is a composition of uh, f that follows t. OK, so, so now uh, what is this derivative? h prime. The derivative of h, uh, we name it h prime. Why, would it, why wouldn't it, we? Because uh, it is still a function of one variable, one input, one output. So certainly it's just the derivative. Uh, and we, uh, how do we compute it? We could substitute, and we'll do that in a minute. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we should certainly try to, um, uh, the idea of developing a multidimensional calculus is to use as much as possible from calculus one. Okay, so every formula that is, can be used, we should be used uh, uh, in, the, in the future. Okay, so, so in particular, if you talk about compositions, the idea is to use the chain rule. And according to the chain rule, the, um, uh, uh, at its simplest, uh, the derivative of the composition is equal to the, um, uh, to the product of derivatives. Right? Remember that one? Okay, so, so then, uh, uh, then, uh, then we would have to try to compute this h. We would use, we have to have derivative of f capital, the function of the variables, and derivative of p, uh, the parameter curve. Okay, so what they are is unclear, and then we have to somehow, uh, and not yet, uh, multiply them in order to produce the derivative of h. Okay, so we'll try to, to do that, but what we have started already is, is so two very different concepts, function of the variables, parameter curve, uh, they should produce uh, the, the, the derivatives, also different concepts, uh, but they have to be somehow uh, so close to each other that we can actually multiply them. So we'll, we'll see that, and we'll do one, one, one at a time, starting with parameter curves, what, that's what we did last time, and uh, uh, looking at, at the derivatives, uh, which is uh, uncomplicated. Uh, the parameter curve is made of two functions, uh, and, uh, and the derivative could be just uh, simply the combination of those two derivatives. Okay, so uh, x plus, so the first function is 1 over 1 plus t. What is the derivative? What? ln 1 plus t, yes. Okay, and y prime is the derivative of the other function. So you can write f prime, g prime, or you can write x prime, y prime. Uh, either way, uh, the, the, the functions, naming functions is convenient, but sometimes you have just too many letters and you might get confused. So, um, um, so we keep track of the names of the variables, which is definitely something we, we want to do. So, uh, question? Uh, I'm sorry. Isn't the Maybe I'm just thinking wrong. Isn't uh, ln of 1 plus c the antiderivative? You're right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. It is, um, okay, so give me the right answer. I think it's, is it 1 over uh, quantity 1 plus t squared? Uh, negative. Okay, okay. Uh, all right. So let's uh, differentiate the other one. Negative 2 minus 2. Negative 2 t minus 2. 
That's that's the chain rule. Two negative two t plus one. Okay, by the chain. Okay. So uh, so I do uh, expect you to know how to differentiate whenever necessary. So we're not gonna uh, spend a lot of time on, on that. But let's just uh, instead look at and ask ourselves what what do we have? If we read every line separately, it's a function of x of t and is derivative function of y of t and is derivative. The end result once again a function of x x prime, uh, you can think of x prime as the, as, as the uh, as, as integrable, uh, and it's once again a function of t. And then the same for y. But if we do as we did before, and we think of this as a whole, as a one thing, then after differentiation, it's still one thing. So we know this as a, this is a primary curve. What does the other one look like? It also looks like a primary curve. What is a primary curve if not, if not a com com combination of, of two functions of the same variable? That's all. That's the definition of, of, of a primary curve is simply two functions uh, of the same variable combined together. That, that's all. Okay, so, so it is a primary curve technically. Uh, why I say technically? Because it's really not, uh, tell, does, as such, it does not tell us a lot. Uh, about the function itself. So that's, that's, that's the point of studying derivatives is that it's, uh, or it's one of the two, is to tell something that uh, we discover by looking at the derivative, tell us something about the behavior of the function itself. Okay, so uh, typically you remember the, the rules of, uh, of, uh, of, of derivatives. So uh, the sign of the derivative tells you the monotonicity of the function. So uh, say t is positive, I'm sorry, uh, f prime is positive, then what? f prime is positive, what does it tell us? f is increasing. f is increasing, and, and similarly, if it's uh, less than zero, then it's decreasing. So, uh, so that way, we, uh, we can, the, we, that, that little rule is very helpful. Uh, and we can, if we still study one line at a time, we can, we can tell about our curve. X prime will tell us whether or not the x coordinate is increasing or decreasing. So, okay, so in other words, it will tell us whether or not we're moving left, from left to right, from right to left. Okay? On the, and then we do the same with y, except now it will be telling us uh, whether, whether what it's going to tell us. Up or down? Up or down. Right. So let me make a little table. To summarize that, so suppose we're talking about the parameter curve with x and y, and suppose I have x prime negative, x prime positive, y prime negative, y prime positive. Okay, so uh, you can think in terms of velocities. Every time uh, in, in any doubt you talk about parameter curves, if there is any doubt, go back to motion and the, uh, try to interpret the uh, um, uh, the concepts in, in those terms. So the x-coordinate, the derivative of the x-coordinate is negative, which means that we're moving from left to right. On the other hand, y prime is negative. So which way we're moving? On the x-y planes. This is for your convenience x-y, standard location x and y. Which way we're moving? Down. From down. up to down. Mm, what? From up to down. You can say more than that. You, uh, I, uh, th this is what I'm talking about, this place. I want to put something here. What, what er I want to put an error there. Which way are we moving? Left down. Left down. Left down. Yeah. So, right there. so x and y both are decreasing. That's, that's how uh, we visualize it. Like this. Okay. Uh, if I move to the right, then y is still going still negative, so we're still going down, but at the same time, when we some time we went to the right. So this is, this is the behavior, right? And then uh, uh, y, now we start going up, but into the, up and to the left, up and to the left, right? And the last one, both of them going up, so we'll go, both of them growing, so up to the right, okay? 
So the sign of the derivatives of two derivatives, okay, so we are talking about two, uh, two derivatives uh, looked at separately. If we want to combine them into one, uh, we have to talk about vectors and, uh, um, um, well, so we'll have to, it, it's awkward to talk about vectors before we actually define what they are and, and have a discussion with separate from, uh, from calculus. But this is pretty good start. Uh, something calculus, wa calculus one type analysis of how derivatives tells you something about which way the function develops. Okay, so in calculus one, it was increasing, decreasing only. With parameter curves, there is no such thing specific unless you talk only at one quarter at a time. Together, you point out the, the direction, and this is, this is pretty good. So if you know, for example, that how the uh, derivative have been changing over time of your parameter curve, you can, you can roughly say which way you're going to be, uh, which way you're going to be going. Okay, so for example, if I'm talking about uh, one curve that is uh, wor worth remembering is, uh, for example, if x and y are uh, trig functions, say sine and cosine, so then uh, um, they will be going up and down, up and down. I mean, the, the, we start with sine is zero to cosine, which means the derivatives will also be alternating in sine, which means that the direction will be alternating between these four in some order, and then you, you suddenly have four. Okay, so we'll do that uh, a, a bit later, uh, but first I want to, to visualize this with, uh, with Excel again. Okay, so if we go back to this one, no. Okay, the, the, this, this one. Okay, so we have two, uh, two curves, as, as we discussed, this same, same functions. Now, now let's, uh, um, we already know what the derivative will look like, but let's let's start over. And uh, um, how should I put it? Okay, let, let me just let me just put x prime over here. We have a formula for x prime, right? We just computed it, but um, um, uh, but I want I want to do approximations. I, I want to do approximations. So uh, so this is the rate of change of uh, of wheat as a function of time, x prime. Uh, so how do we approximate derivatives? We, we just take the ratio of the uh, <coughs> the change in the two values over a smaller and smaller. Right, number. right. So well, I mean, we don't we don't make small and small because if we do, then we have to take a limit and we're back all the way to the derivative. So we just we just pick uh, uh, an increment of time already done, that's our h over there, and uh, that will be our denominator, and then we just look at the incremental change of the, of the, of the value. Okay, so the, you remember these right in the run, one way to look at it, so for example, uh, if I can just scroll down, I think I can reach for it. Well, anyway, so you have two consecutive points, okay? And then uh, I approximate my derivative at uh, either one of these points by, by looking at rise of the run. You can think of these two points, uh, they connect to, uh, to each other by straight line. There is, uh, there is a change of x, or t rather, t change, t change of x vertically, and you take the ratio of those, and that is your approximation, also known as the uh, difference quotient, uh, the slope of the secant line, all, all of those are good, good, good ways to, uh, to put it, but visually that's simply the slope of that, that little, uh, uh, little um, uh, segment. Okay, so in fact the thing is I'm not going to put the number over here, let me see how many, so there will be one fewer value in this column. Do you see why? The number, of, the, the the mismatch is between the number of points and the number of intervals. There are intervals. There are fewer, or one fewer intervals. So I will be um, computing uh, what another another letter, another word that you have to remember is the average velocity or average rate of change. That's what we're talking about. So the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. We approximate it with the average rate of change. Okay. On the other hand, well, th let's think about that. Are we really approximating? Uh, the derivative, because if you remember where it is coming from, it is uh, uh, it is it is prices. 
Okay? And prices actually do change incrementally. Even if you record them every second or every minute or every second, it's still ch incremental change. So it, we, 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 do not, we cannot, unlike its motion, unlike in motion, where the assumption is the, this, the motion is continuous, and we visit every single point between two locations. So then we sample that, those points, and we end up with this. But if we are starting with, say, price, say such as this, prices, then we end up with the idea that's not really applicable because there's no way we can talk about uh, uh, price uh, as a continuous change, even if you record it every 10 seconds or even, even less than that. They do it, but it's still incremental. Okay, so, so in that sense, we are not really approximating the derivative, but rather our function uh, uh, interpolates. So this curve interpolates those dots, creates a curve that passes uh, through those points as, as well as Excel can handle, okay? So, so then in that sense, the, what we are about to compute is not really an approximation, but it is actual reality, okay? So let me compute it. I will be computing then uh, the, the value of that rate of change of, of the function over uh, that intro from, point, from 0 to point 0.2, and I'm putting in the second, in the second row rather than the first row because it is the result of uh, what has, has happened over that during that time interval, okay? So uh, the change, I will have the change of x over the change of t. The change of t is easy. It is h every time by design. Uh, and uh, um, the numerator, well, let me just show you. I will simply subtract. I will simply subtract two consecutive values. So I take this, the current amount, the current value of x, and subtract the previous one, this one. Okay? Close parentheses. So that's the change of x. Okay? And I divide it by, I divide by h, which was, uh, once again, it's uh, R2C1. R2C1. That entry over there. Okay? Okay. And then I spread it down. And the, this is, these are my average, average changes. At this point, I could take it uh, further, and uh, I could, as promised, plot a parameter curve. Well, uh, actually, before, there is no parameter curve at this time. Uh, we, I'm talking about one function. I'm talking about one function, so just, just uh, uh, as a review, um, so we can actually see uh, the features of the graph versus the signs of the rotor. So what do we see? Oh, yeah, the function is decreasing and it, it matches the negative values of the of the average rate of change. So every time the h is positive, right? So <laughs> it is not surprising that if our, our change, if our change is negative, then of course it is going down every time from point to the next point it will be going down. Okay, so that's all, all predictable. I could plot it just, just to, to, to confirm that. I could let me plot it. I choose this. And I choose that, and I go ahead and pull up it. Uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. Um, well, yeah, I don't want to plot it, so let's say separate data. I'm choosing this, these values for x, and then I'm choosing these values for y, the root. Well, this much there. Okay, so uh, so that's that's my root right here. Okay, so the all the values are negative, but you can also see what's happening to. Uh, so what else do we do to see? So that's the basic thing. Is of course negative derivative gives you decreasing function. What else do we see about the derivative that we can also match with the behavior of the function? Going to zero. Okay. Yeah. I, I would. I would probably say that it's, it is the next. The, ne the next question to be asked before that it is the increasing behavior of the uh, of the derivative, which tells you what. The derivative increases. What does it tell you about the shape of the graph? Concave. Concave up. That's right. So uh, it is concave up. 
And then, and then the next question, the more subtle, would be indeed to see that the, the value of the, uh, of the relative is approaching zero, which tells us that the graph gets flat, flatter and flatter. Okay, it doesn't necessarily imply that it has an asymptote, but it does imply that it, it, it becomes flatter. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's carry the same, let's carry out the same thing for the other function. Let me just spread it. Okay. So this will be y prime. Okay. Uh, as you can see, once again, you see the matching uh, signs, right? Positive, and then becomes negative. The derivative is going down. Let me plot. Uh, let me plot the derivative. Once again, as a part of a calculus one review. Okay, data. Data. Okay. Okay, so what do we see? It's decreasing. Uh, yeah, so, so we will discuss the, uh, uh, the signs becomes from negative, from positive to negative, increasing, decreasing, and then it's also decreasing, which means it's uh, concave, down. concave down. Okay, and uh, the fact that it's straight line or appears to be straight line, what does it indicate? But, but our first. <coughs> Our first function was a, a quadratic. Yeah, quadratic, right, right. So uh, antiderivative of linear function is quadratic. Okay, that's another way to think about. It. So I could. That's what we did next. We actually combine. This is the the next one is the combination of that. This is the actual parameter curve. It's the combination of those two. So the first one is responsible for the x-axis. The other is responsible for the y-axis. The result is right here is our parameter curve. Okay, so uh, and then what we just uh, just saw is the uh, I could say pick a point somewhere. Uh, I, I pick say pick the very beginning. So this uh, video over here. So the value of x prime is negative. The value of y prime is positive, which means that we're moving in uh, x is decreasing and y x is decreasing, right? And y is increasing. X is decreasing. X, X is decrease. X is decreasing, and Y is increasing this way, right? X is decreasing. Y is increasing. So like this, we that little table. Okay. Okay. So it goes with five degrees backwards, uh, and, uh, and yes, this is this is where we are, right? The very first point on our graph. This is where we are. We're moving in that direction. Uh, the the arrow, the little arrow, is, is only visible here, but we're moving from uh, left to right. So that that matches. Uh, I just want you to see that if we try to plot this, it's not really very revealing if we try to plot these two together. Uh, they are not, uh, well, uh, let's see, if I, I try to plot the derivative as a uh, part of the curve, okay? So uh, it's not too complicated. Okay, so this is supposed to be my part of the curve. Let me just choose the data correctly. So uh, for the, the uh, uh, like this and like that. Okay, do you see that? Uh, so I'm choosing for my parameter curve data from x prime and y prime together. Okay, so this is at the bottom is my uh, uh, derivative as a parameter curve. Uh, I'm not sure what it tells me a lot about about the shape of the graph uh, uh, over here, unless I watch I'm watching very carefully the time, the, the labeling of the time, and this one is not, isn't even labeled. So uh, the, the problem is with using the derivative as a parameter curve to discover something about the original parameter curve is that uh, the t value is missing. Okay, it's not what we're plotting is the path of the of the uh, of the uh, our parameter curve, not the graph. Okay, so the graph tells you these are the graphs. They tell you everything uh, there is to know about the function. Uh, both variables are present, and you can easily then know uh, match it with the derivative which is in the same in the same position. But when you do uh, paths, uh, uh, tx is missing. Okay, so uh, and that's why uh, you can only match the behavior of the function as derivative if you match points as well. And I'm not sure even where where we are exactly. I think which way does it go? Uh, I think it goes left to right from. Uh, yeah, it's going this way. So 
So they, they, those two match. Maybe. Well, anyway. Uh, anyway, I was, I was just going to make a point that uh, there is really nothing, uh, nothing useful here to, to be exact. But uh, there is there is a point there that uh, um, um, uh, it is uh, it can be plotted because after all uh, we will produce two numbers whether from uh, from the function itself or from its zero if we have two numbers and we can we can compute them. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's carry out let's do the algebra now. Uh, let's do the algebra. These are our functions. And uh, uh, now we'll read the uh, the, uh, the next step is to look at and try to figure out the meaning of the derivative of a function of, of two variables. But first, let's see, let, let's make one, one simple conclusion here uh, based on this analysis here on this computation. It is that the derivative, uh, so the derivative is made of um, uh, the derivative, I'm saying here. Well, okay, the derivative is made of the derivatives of the functions, of the functions involved. Right? So there is really no no doubt about the two functions. We take the derivative, and then we say that is not our new derivative. That that over there is is our derivative. Let, let me make that clear. This is the derivative of the parameter curve. Okay, uh, and now we're moving on to functions of two variables. Okay, it is also made of functions of one variable. Remember how many? to the picture, not this one, this one. Of, so this is the function of two variables. This is how it is visualized. Uh, out of how many functions of one var variables is it made of? Six. Well, six if you have only three, three points at a time, three, three points for the x-axis and three points for the y-axis. Uh, that, that's how we started. Right now, we have already way more of them. Each line here is in fact a function of one variable. Okay, they are, and they are all different. Uh, they happen, happen to have the same slope coincidentally, but, but other than that, uh, each line either going along the x-axis or y-axis is, uh, uh, is a function of one variable. So that is, it shows the, uh, the amount of complexity we have to deal with because every one of these functions will have to be differentiated to begin with in order to understand what the derivative of the whole thing is. Okay. So, uh, so you can you can certainly guess what's uh, uh, th this is a simple situation because all of these lines, even though they're different, the, all these lines. If I move this way, uh, all of these lines are different, but they have the same slope. So, uh, along the x-axis, these are the ones, and they all have the same slope. And in fact, we at some point we actually discussed that. You remember? Well, you you can probably figure it out from the from the picture of what those slopes are. Mm. Well, or, or look at the data. We are moving, uh, well, if we're moving vertically from the, the, the value of x changes from 0 to 0.1, the value of z changes from 1 to 1.1. What's the slope? 0.1? No. The divide is 1. It's the same, same change. Same change to the numerator. Let me point it out. So this is the numerator, what we just did a minute ago. This is the change of uh, y, and this is the change of, I'm sorry, this is the change of z, and this is the change of y. You divide the two changes by each other, and they happen to be the same, so it gives you 1, the slope is 1. So uh, so this is actually, ignore the, uh, it is out of uh, proportion, but it is actually, the slope is 1. On the other hand, if we start moving, it, and you can notice that it continues on throughout. If I look at these, I am in the exact same spot. Okay, so the change is one, which is 0.1, 0.1. So the slope is still one everywhere. And I could move uh, 
I could consider this versus versus that. Same thing. Every time the change of x is 1, the change of, of z uh, is also 1, or point 1. Okay, so the equal and the slope is 1 throughout. No matter where we are, uh, if we progress along the y-axis, the change will be 1. The rate of change will be 1, the slope is 1. Okay, if we now try to uh, go horizontally, uh, the I will be comparing uh, this, uh, well, the, the, this, this, this and that. So, so the change of x is point 0.1, the change of, of z, point 0.2. So the slope is 2. two. The slope is 2, so this, this is the direction of the slope, and it has slope 2. You can certainly, if you go all the way back to, um, to the formula, Uh, the formula, here's the formula, uh, 2x plus y plus 1, so you see those slopes, which I discovered. So z is equal to 2x plus y plus 1. Uh, I, I'll just put 1 over here, and these are the two slopes. So uh, slope along x-axis, slope along y-axis. Okay. So one certainly disappears. We know on the differentiation. We can also uh, uh, realize what uh, how we computationally what do we do? How do we find that two from this formula? So. So we just matched, all I did is, is match the formula with the data we just saw. So it appeared that the slope along the x-axis was 2, and we found 2 in the formula. The uh, slope along the y-axis is 1, we found 1 in the formula. But how do we computationally discover that, these two numbers? Uh, the coefficients, yes, but uh, remember that uh, it is uh, uh, the coefficients, yes. Uh, but, okay, I'm out of time. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you.